Thank you, Eddie. Two weeks ago now, I was able to preach under the anointing Holy Ghost of God, uh, and I've designated a segment of our platform as the kingdom, uh, the, the right-hand side as the kingdom of, of heaven or the kingdom of God, and the left-hand segment, uh, segment as the kingdom of this world. And I, I was reading many years ago, 40 years ago, when I was in prison in Rayford, Florida, uh, when Jesus said that the mysteries of the kingdom of God was given to a select group of people and to others it was not given. And, and then and, and, and the teaching got more intense when, uh, in that chapter 13, starting at verse 11, where Jesus said, and there are some that have eyes and can't see ears and can't hear, and therefore they are condemned because they will not be converted and he will not heal them. And I was concerned about that because it wasn't a Mount Sinai teaching at the time. You know, I was reading the Bible cover to cover. I was in prison. It was, you know, I did a lot of reading while in prison, but I think that the Bible reading was most, the most consistent and reading it the way I was reading it in prison. I understood all the laws, all 641 of the law, law 641 of the laws of the mighty, 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 mighty Mount Sinai. I understood those laws well, and then I understood the history of the movement from Mount Sinai into, across, into Transjordan, into Israel, past Jericho, down to the time of the Babylonian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, and the birth of Jesus. But when Jesus was teaching on, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, about the mysteries of the kingdom of God, None of that was a part of the understanding of what had been the Old Testament genre. Now, I'm not separating Jesus from the Old Testament. Please, please, please don't ever try to say that I'm doing that. But what I want to do is, is say how I, I was startled at this. And I later went on to get some extra biblical readings that said that, that pointed out not about this particular item of, of scripture, but I pointed out a, a type of the sophony or esoteric, if you will, uh, kind of teaching that had at its premise the fact that there was a segment of spirituality and uh, and and knowledge that, and either and, and combined that the average person does not know is not privileged to, and so as a result of it, they don't see the actual events of reality that is around them that is so common to everyone else. Let me let me let me show you what I mean. Here, let me I'm talk, doing all this talking you what are you talking about here today? Let me show you what I mean. I got a great example. I was talking to the Lord about this. He showed me this. What what Jesus says, where are we now? What Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel chapter 13 verse 11 he answered and said it to them because it is, he had just told them a parable about the wheat uh, uh, and the sower, the sower and the seed, rather. And, and in verse 11, and he said, it is because it's given unto you. Now watch this. He said to them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And, and that is something that we did not find within the Mount Sinai, the mighty, 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 mighty Mount Sinai dialogue, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He said it was given to them, given to the disciples, but to them it is not given. To others it is not given. Now I want you to think about this for just a second. That Jesus said there's some knowledge that's given, well a particular knowledge of the kingdom of heaven is given to a select group of people. But it's not given to a condemned group of people. Now, they're, 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 the modification of this one is that they're just not given a knowledge, and the other is that they are a condemned group of people, and we want to look at how God condemns people or how God selects people uh, and how God has now come up with the whole, if you will, organizi organization of the, the last of humanity called the elect. Can I share something? Can I show you something? I'm, you say, yeah, what I want you to do now before I go to my next verse, I want you to understand that Jesus, in, even in his equity, even in his sense of, of fairness, even in his sense of justice, Jesus chooses some people above other people. That's right. Now, I know the Bible says there's no respecter of man. And in that sense, in that context, but 
but Jesus does choose some people for higher learnings than he does, and he leaves other people at lower learnings. And one of the things about the Outlaw World Missionary Church, this is a higher learning church, and it seems, oh, well, let me show you. Okay, you see, uh, Pastor Manny, you see, you say that, you would say that. Let me show you something in the Bible that you know it's there. If you go with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, there's an extraordinary event here that, that examples out, that is empirical, that demonstrates exactly what we're talking about, how God chooses, and what the whole process is, or understand the process of the mysteries of the kingdom of God, how some people are privileged to esoteric, a higher knowledge than others. Watch this, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Jesus and then answered Peter, okay, that, 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 that's, that, that's good enough right there. Let, let's go back to verse one. What happened? Jesus takes three of the disciples. Now everybody knows that there were 12. What happened to the nine? The other nine. They didn't go. This mount of transfiguration, which is an elevated uh, experience where something in extraordinary happens, it is a multiplicity of what we refer to in the, in the seminary as, as a theophany, a multiplicity of theophanies. And, and Jesus only allows three of the disciples to experience. He only allows three of the disciples to experience this. You'll find that later on, these three also will experience greater punishment than any of the other. But for right now, they are up on a mount called the Mount of Transfiguration. And the other nine disciples are down in the valley. Now you would look at this critically, and now you can get on, on board with me that Jesus does choose some of his people for higher experiences than he does others. You see what I'm saying? He chose Peter, James, and John for a higher experience on the Mount of Transfiguration than, than, he, than he, he did for the other nine disciples. And they have a knowledge that the other nine don't have. They have a knowledge of, of meeting Moses. I mean, can you imagine meeting Moses and, you know, some nearly 1,500 years later, meeting Elijah some 1,200 years later? Well, 900 years, I think. Can you imagine the three disciples and then hearing God speak? That's an experience of, a, of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven or the power of God. That not everybody gets an opportunity to be able to participate in such a high and lofty process. Therefore, we go back to, uh, to, to Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, where Jesus said, it is given to you to know the mysteries, but to them it is not. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So what we're doing now is that we are going through the process of understanding the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It, it's one thing that, well, it's one thing if you have been chosen to go up on the mount, right? But it's another thing if you have not been chosen. Now, I'm going to look a little closer at this because uh, we got to get, if we have time here today, we got so much to try to cover. But if we can, and by the way, I want to, uh, I, I, I was speaking to you the, the recently about having a, uh, a, a conference or retreat because there's so many things of revelation that God's pouring out right now through me since the 28th of August that I think we need to take the time to deal with them. And one of those things, I think, is I want to look closer at the, the fact that Jesus said 
in Matthew's gospel chapter 24 about the temple of God, that there would not be one stone left upon another. Yet there is the west wall, allegedly, of that temple, which is the wailing wall. Now, I'm a Zionist. Don't, don't, get, don't try to mess with me and my love for, for, for God's love for Abraham and the word of God and the mighty, 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 mighty Mount Sinai. Don't bother me about that. Don't get in my face. I'm a Zionist, all right? I ain't going on with this Palestinian stuff, all right? But now here, what I want to say to you is that, is that wall, because Jesus said there would not be one stone left upon another. I mean, he said it, there would not be one stone left upon another. So I, I you know, I want to look at this because I don't believe Jesus lied or, miss, miss, you know, missed the boat on this one. I don't think he missed the boat on this one. So we'll talk about that. And we got a lot of revelations that we are talking about, the salvation of the flesh. We got to talk about the, that the tribulation runs only seven days. There are literally so many things that God Almighty, his name is Jesus, has poured out uh, since the 28th of August that I think we need to come. To, and I'm thinking maybe that we would have uh, we would have this conference in Haiti. That's right. You know, you know why? Because the word Haiti means the high mountain. When Dessalines, you know, when after the French, after the revolution, the Haitian revolution, and they won their independence, and they changed their name from, Domin from Dominica or Domico or Dominica or something like that, Dominico, after the, the, French, say, the Dominican priest, they changed the name of Haiti to, to Haiti, which means the high mountain, right? So I'm praying that maybe in January, after we get back from, from Egypt, I'm praying that we could hold a meeting down in Haiti, on the high because Haiti is called a high mountain. And one of the things I want to do in Haiti, of course, is that it's the first Hamite, Canaanite nation that won its independence back in 1798 with Dessalines, and they named it Haiti, they named Haiti the high mountain. So all right, we'll talk about that. We'll come back to that. But what I want to say to you now is that Jesus took three of the disciples and left three behind. He took three of the disciples to have a unique, unprecedented experience that very few men on earth have ever, ever had to beat Moses and Elijah. Now, you know, Elijah appeared to me some time ago. It's going back now, I don't know, 12, I don't know, 15, maybe as much as 17, 18 years ago, Elijah appeared to me and said he was weary and he had given me his mantle and he told me he wanted to rest, that he was just, he just out there. Elijah appeared to me. Some people say, Pastor Man, all right, okay. All right, I, I know not drop those kinds of things on you. Get you kind of, everybody gets discombobulated. And you know, the other thing is that people are, more people are, are, are moving further and further away from the Word of God, the study of the Word of God. So when you say things like that, they think you're some sort of a, I don't know, crazy person maybe. All right, so let's get back to the fact that are you one of the chosen to go up on the mount? Now, I'm going to tell you, don't run around here and tell me that because you're a Catholic or because you're a Southern Baptist, you are equal to everybody else in terms of the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God or the dispensation of what the knowledge does bring in terms of knowledge is power and your ability to understand and interpret and to be the Lord's servant. Are you one of the Mount Transfiguration uh, candidates. Are you up on the mountain or are you down in the valley? And that's how Jesus did it. That's what Jesus did. Don't go, don't, just because you're Catholic, just because you're Southern Baptist, just because you're Pentecostal, just because you're Black Baptist, just because you're African Methodist Episcopal, whoever you are, just because it does not mean that you walk in the same knowledge and understanding of mysteries and powers as does perhaps some of your brethren. Now, that statement I've just raised, I raised it in the context when the church age was a viable, living, breathing instrument. The church age has closed. But I want to go back to that age for just a moment because even though the church age is closed, we can now begin to discover how God has chosen the elect. That, and where the same groupings of dynamics were used that uh, he chose one-fourth of the 12 disciples to go with him up on the mount 
Will it be a similar kind of event where God will choose one fourth of humanity to walk with him to see his coming in power and glory when he makes his second coming and he makes his return and to see his kingdom? Will the same mathematical demographics and dynamics be employed by almighty God for the purpose of the elect? So let's get something straight here. Let's get something straight. And we're, and we're, we're operating under the, 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 the understanding of the church age. But the truth of the matter is that we will move on to the fact that the church age is closed. But in the church age, God chooses some men to stand above other men in terms of their understanding. Last night, while we were out at the auspicious left right center, and we were enjoying some just great, uh, Deborah had performed, oh man, I, you know, I, I told you how she performed. And we were having some champagne and some nice uh, wraps and, and cheeses. And, oh man, it was great, it was great. And so Captain Lewis came over to me um, and he asked me that about, am I in some sort of a Moses kind of mode where I can only do what I can only do for God? And we sat and we talked about it, we debated it for a while. But what I want to come to, my good look at the time. What I want to talk, what I want to say to you now is that there are some people that have been choked. And, and you may not, you don't ever, listen, you don't ever have to agree with, you don't ever have to agree with anything I, I, I say. <laughs> you know, uh, the other item is this, is, your allergies don't make me sneeze. Let's put it that way. You can either take it. You can either take it. You can neither take anything from me, or nor can you give anything that God has not already given. So, what I want to do is that I want to point up because now we got to go. Because I told y'all yesterday, the last time we were together, about the three women I'm dealing with. Who one woman has a dead spirit that is walking around inside of her house and she can't get rid of it. The other woman is um, that they're, they're, they're a witchcraft. There has been years and years and years of witchcraft practices. Uh, and then there's another one with, with a, a sodomite demon. Uh, and I have cast those demons out and I have put walls up against that dead spirit walking in that woman's house. But the issue is here is that what I have now come to understand as a demon slayer and one who casts out demons is that even when you cast out the demons, when people have had demons for 5, 10, 12, 15, 30 years, they, it's like an addiction to some sort of drug or some sort of uh, nicotine and even when you cast out, let's say, a homosexual demon, the demon is gone, but the flesh still remembers when that demon was in the flesh. The demon's gone. The demon's gone. I'm telling you, the demon is gone. I've cast, listen, I'm telling you something. You come to me, you got a demon. You come to me, you got a demon. I'm casting that bad boy out. No, I'm the demon slayer. You come to me, you got a demon in you. I will cast the demon out. The, the, the process is, is that that needs to be after ministry to you because you, your body and your mind still remembers the spirit of that demon and you think that you still have that demon. There was a thing that, you know, they, a lot of people, I've studied in some medical records that said that if you get a, if you're an amputee, let's say for us, you cut off your leg at the knee, um, you're an amputee or you cut off your arm at the elbow, for, for many, many years after that amputation, your mind still thinks that your arm is dead. It isn't. Your mind still thinks that your leg is dead. It isn't. And it's the same thing. So what I do when I cast demons out of people, I tell them, you got to stay in the church. You got to come to the church. You got to resist being disobedient to the teachings, especially the teachings of tithing and giving, the teaching of fasting and praying. You got to stay in the church. You got to stay under my authority until you can now understand that the demon is gone and that you're, you're being haunted by that spirit. That, that's the woman that right now who I'm dealing with, 
who's got a dead man was walking around in the house, but I blocked him. I, I put up a wall around, but she still thinks he's there. He's not. All right, so here, here's the thing. And, and, and what I want to say is because these people have been cursed and I need to get to Canaan being cursed. I don't, there's so much here today that I, I, so we consumed a lot of time going back to this principle that Jesus took three disciples, not all nine, to experience the most powerful experience on planet Earth, even more so than walking on water. It took Peter, James, and John up into a high mountain apart. Now notice the word apart. Notice the word apart. Next word up, ex parte, if you're in, into the legal stuff, ex parte. No, he took, and these three were able to experience the presence of Elijah, the presence of Moses, and to hear the voice of God. The other never got an opportunity to do that. And there are people among us now who have the opportunity also to experience and know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to a lot of people that perhaps that, that, that privilege is not given. So when Jesus said that, when he said that, that, that was the thing that started me 40 years ago when I was in Rayford Prison. One other thing before I go, then I really got to go. I really, 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 really got to go. One other thing is that Canaan has been cursed. Now, I told you yesterday that Canaan built the oldest city on planet Earth, and my engineer, who was swifter than an eagle flies, was able to pull up the fact and note that, the, that, 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 that Jericho is the oldest city built on planet Earth. Now, the oldest city in the Bible is Avila, but the oldest mechanized, if you see, architectural structured city ever built anywhere was built by my brother Canaan. And it was built in a place called Jericho. And see that, that is right there. That's a monument, Jericho, the, the world's oldest city. But watch this. But Canaan has been cursed, so he can't build cities anymore. God cursed him, and he can't build cities anymore. But watch this. Verse 15. And this is the verse that we're going to put on all our evangelism and we're going to put it on our, uh, we're going to make cards and make it available for people. Jesus says this in verse 15, talking about Canaan, uh, we're talking about people rather. He said, for this people's heart is wax gross. And that's what's happening to black people. That's what's happening to black people. That's, this is what's happening to black people. Their heart is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But they don't knock. They haven't done that. Now, I have been sent. I have been sent to the Hamites and the Canaanites to break that curse. That's what I've been sent to do. And I, we want to, I want to make sure I get that in, I'll tag that into today's teaching. So what was today's teaching? Today's teaching was this, was that in Matthew's gospel, chapter 13, verse 11, Jesus said to some of y'all is given the known, given the opportunity to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But them other people out there, them other people out there, they don't know it. They don't know them other people. They don't know it. And then I gave you the example how Jesus took three disciples up on the mountain to meet Moses and Elijah, but the other nine they didn't get a chance to do that. All right, so we nailed that one down. Now we got that one. Uh, here, I, I want to be able to do a couple of things. One is that I, I really would like to hold a conference in Haiti in January, and I'm going to talk to Pastor Celia down in, 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 in Haiti about the potential. We, they, we, Haiti is called, the name Haiti means high mountain. And I'd like to take some people down and say, Pastor, people don't hold, hold conferences in Haiti. Haiti is a poor country. Yeah, I know. I know. But I believe there's a power. I, I, I know when I came back from Haiti, I came back with a mouthful of blessings. And, I, and Pastor Celia has a great ministry down there. And I like to take a few people down there, you know, maybe 40, 50, 100 people maybe. And, you know, there's a great hotel down there. And, and you know, and we can spread, spread the word and spread the wealth. But the purpose of it would be a three-day event. And I'm saying to you that I'm one of the ones that have been given the privilege to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I'm the Lord's servant. You know, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the, I'm the Lord's servant, and um, I, I, and I, there are people that have been rejected. There are people that have been cursed, and we need to look at breaking curses, and we need to look, look at breaking witchcraft, breaking uh, 
uh, necromancer spirits. We need to look at all of that. And then we need to understand the process that once I cast a demon out of you, what you have to do in order to maintain uh, power over that demon that has been cast out of you. We also have to look at people who are under a curse because Moses gave the privilege to curse, not just a person curse. When, 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 when Noah cursed Canaan, he was the first generation of Ham. When Noah cursed Canaan, Canaan was not the one who uncovered the father's nakedness. It was Ham that did it. But when Noah cursed Canaan, he was the first generation. And every generation thereafter has been under that same curse. Now, I, I've said I'm a son of Ham. I'm not a son of Canaan. I'm a son of Ham. I'm not a son of, God told me. Uh, you work out the birth, how that happened, you argue with God. God told me I'm a son of Ham. That's why I'm going to Egypt. I'm going to take 70 people over, biggest trip I ever take it, anywhere at a time. God told me I'm a son of a Ham. And, but Canaan has remained in perpetual curse. And because I'm a son of Ham, and have not been cursed. Uh, I have been able to move through the world no matter where I go, doors open. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter what the circumstances are. Do it, even when I was in prison, like Joseph, I became the head of the, the school. I, be, I You know, I, when I was in the Rayford prison, I was in the New York prison, I became the head of the bake shop. And where I go, though, everywhere I go, I was reading some of these ugly people wrote about me the other day, talking about how, you know, I, I've been just kind of moving up in popular, moving up in popular. And that's been my, that's been, that's, even though they were trying to condemn me, these, 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 these mafia people, they were trying to condemn me with their article they wrote. But what they were really saying is that everywhere I go, I move up. They should have had enough sense to know that they can't stop me either. But that's another story for another time for these idiots. But no, listen, I'm a son of Ham. So. But, but Moses said that you can curse to the third and fourth generation. And some of y'all are under curses. And, and that you ain't going to break out. You ain't going to get out. You ain't going until that curse be broken off of you. And same thing with Canaan. He's under a curse. And God has sent me as a son of Ham to break my brother's curse. Good God Almighty. Good, 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 I like that little segment where I threw a dig in at those people that that wrote that 28-page hit job on me, saying, I, you know, I always I was a son of us. My father, grandfather was a slave, and I just kept moving up, moving up, moving up, getting more popular, more popular, more popular. Now, the idiots, you ought to know that I'm the Lord's servant. I'm going to always move up. I'm going to move on your butt too. Anyway, so here, y'all pray with me about. Let's let's do a. And I'm going to talk to Pastor Lee about going down to Haiti to, because that word Haiti means timeouts. All right, I got to go. Uh, I've got to wrap things up. But don't, don't ever forget this, that Jesus took three disciples. He didn't take everybody with him. Not every man is equal in the power of God. He didn't take everybody with him. He took three. He just took three to that mighty, mighty experience on Mount Transfiguration. He just took three, Peter, James, and John. You can take everybody. Not everybody. Not e so you got to find, the, well now actually, he has taken the elect out of the, the basic church group. He's taken the elect out of the church group and not everybody who was once in the church is now in the elect group in the midst of not the transfiguration but the tribulation. We got to talk about this more in detail when I'm not so pressed for time. Uh, spread the word. Follow me on, on Twitter. Uh, on Facebook and at Outlaw Worldwide. At, on YouTube, Outlaw Worldwide. Go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe at Outlaw Worldwide. Um, if you subscribe there, that way every time I post up something on, on YouTube, you'll get a notice about it. All right, so follow me on Twitter at Dr. James D. Manning and subscribe at Outlaw Worldwide. 
And the other item is, of course, is on Facebook is James David Manning, Dr. James David Manning Facebook, and not my worldwide Facebook as well. You can even follow me on Instagram as well. Do that also. All right, so we can stay in tune. And you can always donate. There's a donate button there where you can give online. Now, as long as that's still up, we pray, give God the praise that it's up. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man in the will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the man in report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.